Hey everyone, Ava Valley here, and today we're going to be playing Bon Bon. This has been developed by Blam, and you can find this over at Itch.io. So, we've played Bon Bon before, kind of? Uh, so I guess all the other versions are gone. This is the newest version, and yeah, I'm suspecting things are going to be different than the last time we've played. Now, this game comes in part A and part B, and I guess to play part B, you gotta get through part A to get the code in order to open the game. Okay, so, yeah. Get into it. Hello, everyone. Blam here, the original creator of all this. Well, I don't want to describe this game as a porn game. It does include sexual content, images, etc., which I will definitely be censoring out. With that being said, are you over 18? Yes. Great. Enjoy yourself. But enjoy yourself responsibly. Take time to go outside. Enjoy some air. Be nice to others. You know, touch grass. Enjoy situations that you haven't or will not been be in. It does have an effect on you in the real world. Even if you don't notice it. Meh. I say all this to say. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy the community. Enjoy the game. But don't forget the real you and the real people around you. Don't get too wrapped up in fantasy. Thank you. Thank you to the team members who brought us to this point. Some old and some new. A lot of people there. There are so many people who brought us to this point. Even shouting out people who help with the Discord. Thank you. Thank you all. Whatever work you've done. However much you helped me get there. Us here to this point. Just thank you. Onto the game. This probably isn't what you expected. If you've been reading our recent update post, let me explain. Oh my god, okay. Yes, yep, you're talking about the code that I just, and I, I don't know why I decided to click through all that. I mm. uh, get the code at the end of the section of the visual novel, much later from now. Ooh, how long is this game? I'll take that code to play Night 1 and Bonbon's Pot A, Part A. Wait, what? When you complete night one, you'll get a code to continue on the visual... Wait, what What the heck? Okay, so... You don't... Play through all of A first. I guess you do a section of it, and then you do a section of B. And what, is that supposed to give me a code to open up a section of A? Oh, oh. Uh -huh. Then so on for night two, night three. It's a very new and different concept. But it leads to a scary, enjoyable, fun, exciting game. So just bear with it if you can. I'll try. I should probably save. I don't know why. It's just... Alright, three lines of me rambling. After all of that, after I found something that I enjoy, it's failing. After a few more days, I won't have the cash to buy great value pizza sauce. Womp womp. I felt so disgusting. With his blood running in my veins with what he did. After David and Elizabeth's deaths, I felt so lost for so long. But then, but that doesn't excuse what he did to those children. Dear God, those children. The man throws his beer bottle on the ground, creating a loud crash as it hits. He looks down at the bottle. Its juices are pooling on the ground, as he did. So, from what I read on the game page, it's like, it's supposed to be mixing both visual novel and like FNAF office gameplay kind of thing so I'm guessing because I didn't pay too well attention I skipped a lot of stuff the visual novel is part A and the other one is part B great Bon Bon is breaking down each day and I don't have the parts or money to keep repairing her I have to shut her off soon I can't bring this back I thought I could revive this gig but with shitty pizza, broken up robots, and stacking bills, I can't keep up. I'm done. The man hangs his head in silence. Footsteps. Who could it be? Air gets cold. The hairs of the man's neck stand up, and suddenly an alarming sense of dread fills him. The footsteps stop beside the man, but he can't seem to turn his head. The figure beside him takes a seat. And as he does, the air grows cold. The figure opens its mouth, preparing to speak. Sire. The raspy voice filled the man's head. 
an emotion relevant since the dawn of time, an emotion that brought about so many advancements, achievements, revelations, and yet, at the same time, has brought so much destruction. It's brought the end of eras. The man couldn't speak, or think for that matter, only the creature's voice rang out through the man's thoughts. The man was quiet, he couldn't speak, or his mind was too focused on listening. Everyone has desires, Michael. Or I guess you'd like to be called Joe now? Joe was surprised at hearing his name, his prior name, which he wished to leave behind. Is this real? What is that thing? But even though his body questioned, his mind and mouth stayed quiet. It was as if fear was being injected into him to make his entire being paralyzed. Now to that point, I ask you, Joe, what are your desires? The man tried to muster out a response, finally being able to speak. I... You may speak freely, Joe. I want to spread my establishments across the country, the world even. I want to spread joy, give some children the childhood I never had, the childhood my brother and sister never had. Joe pieced together his words as best as he could with the overwhelming presence of the man he could barely look towards. I see. That was a noble desire, spreading joy and giving childhoods back. Maybe you are trying to right your father's sins. Well, in the end, that doesn't matter to me. What if you could have all your heart's desires and more? What if I could give you a chance to give that joy? What would you do for it? The man was free to think. He thought his situation over. He was an almost broke drunkard with no family left. Well, no family that mattered to him. And after a few moments, he spoke. Anything. I'd do anything. That's a dangerous word, Joe. Anything means absolutely anything. I mean it. My mind made up. I can't struggle anymore. I'm so tired. Huh. <laughs> All right, then. I'll give you what you desire, Joe. But remember, a desire as heavy as this one requires a heavy payment in return. The man replies confidently. I'll do it. Ah, just remember, I warned you. All right, so we're going to be at Bonbons now. End of intro. I guess I'm going to save. Okay. Uh, oh, boy. Ugh. Two in the morning where I am right now. I'm tired. I gave a blank stare towards the door, looking directly at the pink note taped to it. Just came home from another job I was fired from because of the insomnia condition I have. Because I'm so restless, I can keep it push. Uh, I can keep it pushing for two days straight, but I'll crash randomly for four hours. Then I come home to my studio apartment, see a note on my door to see my home isn't mine anymore. I keep staring blankly at it to make sure it's real. Either that, or I'm in shock. I take a deep breath inwards, of not relief but anger. A week away from Christmas, and I'm out in the streets. That's just fucking great. I gave a defeated bang on the door, on the front door of my former residence. Dog, what am I going to do now? Oi, Andre. Your familiar voice called my name, and I bowed my head, giving a small prayer for it not to be who I think it is. Oi, Andre, you little shit. You heard me calling you? Oh, God damn it. I rest under my breath because I know very well who's standing at my side. Take a deep breath and close my eyes again. Oh, Mr. Wilson. Probably one of the saddest people I've ever met in my life. A feeble, almost old man who takes in rent for people he knows who are on hard times and just fucks with them for the hell of it. If anyone I know deserves the label of a bastard, it's this guy. Well, he did take in a broke 18-year-old off the streets with no background check. He didn't do it out of the kindness of his heart. He just needed another money source he could talk shit on and someone who wouldn't say anything back. I filled those conditions to a T. Every difficult work day, I would pray he wasn't in his usual spot by the entrance. Ugh, guy. Ugh. Harassing tenants, whether verbally or by, by talking shit about things he knew. Or physically, by touching on the girls who couldn't say anything back. For almost, for most of us here, 
This was the only place to call home. He took advantage of that. Well, out that deep breath I was holding and turned to face him, straightening myself up a bit. I let out an awkward, Hey, Mr. Wilson. Don't you, hey, Mr. Wilson, me, you little cunt. You didn't abide by my terms, and now you're out. Now get the fuck out, you broke boggard. Ah, oh, yes. Those terms he loves to mention. Those terms change whenever he feels like it. Give him some extra money. Get him some food. Hell, if you're a girl, let him have a feel. And those terms magically change a lot. If I may, what terms did I break? You know what you did, you self-righteous prick. What did I say about having people here aren't on your lease? And on top of that, you fucking animals were making noises all night. Ah, you must be talking about that night with me and Ava. If I'm being honest, I was trying to forget it. You want to remember? I don't know. Sure. Ava and I were friends of circumstances. Her shitty circumstances. The lecture was both running away from home at the age of 15. And it's been a lot of hard memories since then. I'm 20, turning 21, in a few days. And she's been my only friend since then. Well, there's also... Never mind, that bridge is burned. We're celebrating her getting a job, which got her a new place. Someplace nicer than my shit-stained abode. Well, we never had alcohol, and we were only 19, so we got really drunk. There isn't much place to go in a studio, so we ended up getting close until... Oh, you got laid in your brain or something? Oh, I forgot. I'm here with him. I'm pitching a sad tent, alright. Hmm. He's not mad about me breaking his terms. He's mad that no woman would ever want to sleep with him. He's fucking pathetic. I flash a shit-eating grin on my face at the realization of how pathetic this man is. He notices this and sets something off in him. He walks up to me with a smile of his own. What are you smiling for, you bastard? I remember when you came begging on my doorstep for a place to live. Hmm. What did you say? Did you run away from home? I saw those bruises. Whatever made you run away must have punched you up real good. My smile fades. He gets closer. Let me guess. You had a drunk daddy, didn't you? Hmm? He beat you up a bit because you were acting like a little prick you are now. Then you ran and... Ran like a little bitch begging me to swallow you with late payments and rent extensions, huh? My smile is now a frown, which makes his face wrap into a large smile at my dismay. He is close with his smile and says in my face. Though I have to admit, that bitch with the fat ass, what would you call her, Ava? What did you call her, Ava? I liked her much more than that poor Valerie. He chuckles after putting down my ex-girlfriend. He's laughing his ass off, but I, on the other hand... I'm not smiling. He thinks he has some power over me, over everyone here, like it's his castle and he's the king. I blow up my fist up in response to his brewing, to my brewing anger. Blah, 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 blah. He continues spewing his shit that I'm not listening to. His smile burns something in me. My blood is boiling and I, I let it go. I let it go and walk away. Contrary to all that I think about the man, he has money. He's older. He's never been in trouble with the cops. And that's because no one reported him, but still. If I punched him in the face, I'd be on one in handcuffs for punching him. I've been in trouble with the cops quite a bit. So even if he deserves it, for treating other people like shit, I can't do anything to him. I take a moment to gather my mind, and I walk down the set three sets of stairs, entering the outside world. It's infuriating, but that's the way the world works. Hmm... Just keeps going. A lot of talking. Thought they might be voice acting, but no. Ugh. I started getting my mind together, realistically. I'm out of a place to stay now and can't do anything about it. God, I can't think. There's too much to think about. Where am I gonna stay? Am I homeless now? I have about fifty dollars to my name after getting fired from my last job. I rub my head, trying to calm down, but it's not working. I have no idea what to do. I could shoot Ava a message, but I don't want to bother her with my problems. I could always just grab a drink and try to calm down. You're acting just like your father. Alcohol is a no then. Wah wah. I need to talk.
took my phone, called my friend, who I've known for the past couple of years, due to some significant circumstances. <laughs> Pick up already. Phone rings a few times, then picks up. Hey, Ava, we talked briefly at our usual place. I'm right around the corner from it. Hey, Andre, I'm kind of... Listen, you may be busy, but I need you right now. Please. So on the other side of the line, deliberates for a few seconds. I can make time. I'll meet you there in 20 minutes. Thanks. Hang up the phone, breathing a large sigh of relief. Ten minutes later. I'm walking on the path we usually take to her to her to her to her to her, blah, 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 blah. Oh God. So tired. I can barely even like I can't like say any of the words. <laughs> okay. Walk on the path we usually take to head to our spot. No one Ava for a while. And I'm thankful for her. We're thankful for each other. We helped each other out in some bad situations. I leaned up against a tree where our spot was. My eyes were starting to get tired. Damn it. I can't sleep when I'm when I can't sleep when I'm in my own home. I was standing outside is where my body decides to get tired. I have insomnia. Extreme case of it. I can't go to sleep when I want to, and my body wants to go to sleep. It's usually at work. Hence, I don't keep many jobs for long. Well, why don't you just get, I don't know, a night job where you're up and to sleep in the day. Problem solved. Yawn. That's how I feel. Fine. It'll only be a few minutes. And I close my eyes, drifting off. And then we play the game and realize it was all a dream. Hey. Huh? I blink my eyes open. Hey. Finally listening, I open my eyes. Hey. Hey. A lot of haze. You need to talk? I nod my head. Well, yeah, alright. Let me get comfortable. She moves and leans on a tree in front of me. And we look at each other. What happened? I finally got kicked out. After coming home from a long ass shift where I don't have any job left. Or job anymore, I got kicked out. Oh. I knew we were behind on bills. But I didn't think it was that bad. Now my mind is racing. And I don't know what to do. I keep thinking about what happened when I left home. And if leaving was a mistake. Don't say that. You know what happened back there. You had to leave. Just like I did. I sighed a deep breath out and continued. I can't hold a fucking job because of my condition. And I'll barely have anything left in my pockets after a few days. Especially if you're going out for drinks. Jeez, why would you do that? Almost dead broke. And I feel my health declining. All the medicine I'm choking down to either put me to sleep or keep me awake. Which is locked in my old home. Which I'm now locked. Locked out of. You know, it's something that doesn't feel fair. Like, we're just predetermined by God to have bad lives. Why do some people grow up with lovely families, with love all around them, while we grew up with alcoholics, abusers, and manipulators? I don't know, Andre. Do you need a place to stay? I could move some stuff around. I don't think I could. I don't want to be a burden. I've been adding on to her bills, and I can't even keep a job. I also don't want to trigger one of her responses again. But you've been doing good, as long as I don't touch her. No, I know. I Could you sit here with me for a bit, like we did when we were younger? Yeah, of course. She sits back and opens the tree stump op uh, sits back in the open tree stump opposite me and closes her eyes. Seeing her peaceful makes me feel calm. We've had situations like this in the past, where we've come together in tea... I like her. I like her a lot, but no, I can't have her. She's had a difficult life and is finally on her way up. I don't want to drag her down. So I stay quiet, close my eyes, and lay there in solitude, if only for a few moments. It feels nice just to be around someone I know cares about me, even if I can't touch her. After that thought, the moment continues. Oh, more talking. My God. We get up. I gotta get going. My boss has a stupid booth event to raise some money. Maybe it'll help with getting the promotion. 
you update me on where you plan to stay tonight? I nod my head. Good. She yawns. The bags on her eyes make her look visibly tired, but she's strong, so she keeps trucking on. She starts walking down the path again. Park path, presumably back to her place or work. She does it with a stretch because laying on the ground isn't comfortable. Bye, Ava. I'll walk back to town's main square around noon. Though I'm tired, I know I won't be able to sleep anyway. So I continue going. 7-Eleven is just around the corner, and I know Jamie, so he lets me slide on the ID check. Walked around the block onto, into Cornerstone. It was quiet. Regular store music playing. And I didn't take time to look at who was behind the counter before I went back to the drink aisle for my beer. And I thought it was weird that I didn't hear Jamie's voice, but I ended up shrugging it off. That's because he's probably not working that day. I walk up to the register with my head down, pulling out my wallet. I was surprised to hear a female voice call my name. Andre? Huh? I look and see a Latina in her regular uniform. I usually see Jamie in. That Latina is my ex-girlfriend, whom I got with after that night with Ava. Oh, Valerie. Hey. I didn't think you were working this shift. Yeah, well, we needed to switch after what happened with that guy last night. Jamie said he'd switch with me. Oh, alright, yeah. Just ring me up. Deliver that line with a cold feel. I didn't want to get into anything. I just wanted to get out of the store. Yeah, uh, sure. She grabs my drink and pauses. You're drinking again. You said you would stop. Take a deep breath in and out. Not wanting to have this conversation. Listen, could you ring my stuff up so I can get out of here? You promised you would stop. She looks at me with a cold stare, which caused me to take an even deeper breath. Val, I just got kicked out of my apartment today and I lost my job at the office. I don't want to talk about this shit. <clears throat> I'm not giving you the... Val, give me the goddamn drink. I reach for it, but she pulls it back, which causes me to ball up my fists, physically angry. Val, I'm not giving you... My anger and frustration built up to the point where I instinctively raised my fist. But then, in response, I see her cower back, and I immediately soften my tone and body gesture. I... Right, sorry, sorry. I forget how big I am sometimes. She probably still vividly want... Uh, she probably still vividly what happened that night when I almost drunkenly beat that guy to death. He was putting his hands on her. What was I supposed to do? Maybe I went too far. I did the right thing, right? Shake my head to get those thoughts away. No use on drilling on it now. Ugh. Save. This is gonna take forever. It's been a long day. I need to find somewhere to work, and hopefully, my shelter will take me in. I also forgot that she's gone through some things. Oh, I'm sorry. She holds a drink in her hand, debating on whether or not to give it to me. I can't blame her after what happened last time. An idea visibly flashes across her face, and she quickly asks, You need somewhere to stay, right? Somewhere to work? I nod in response, wondering what she has coming up with in her head. She disappears into the back room. Uh oh, she glitched. Here's someone rummaging around. Then she pops back over the paper, handing it to me with a smile. I don't know why I like I'm get I can't get the words right coming out of my mouth. I'm saying words that aren't even there. Oh my god. Okay, let's let's continue on. 
Here, read. Holy shit. Room and board plus they paid that much? That's amazing. My god, Val. I could kiss you. Caught myself on that word and then cleared my throat. Uh, thanks, Val. No problem, Andre. What are X's for? You both look visibly embarrassed at what she said. Mm-hmm. Well, uh, I'll get going then. Wait, uh, it's a few miles away. No, you don't have a car, so do you want me to drive? Do you want to drive mine? I mean, I could take a taxi, but I'm not opposed to saving money. That would be amazing. But how would I, would I return it to you? Oh, uh, I could ride with you, if that would be fine. Of course it would be fine. But awkward, though. All right, well, I get off my shift in a few hours, so, I mean, you could wait around here or come back in a bit. There isn't anything to do over here. I could grab a newspaper, I guess, catch up on things. All right, I'll grab a newspaper. Sure. Lore. I walk over to the newspaper stand, browsing the papers before me. There seems to be quite a few papers here, all discussing different things happening. Some of the past, some now. What should I get? Hmm. The Freddy's murder spree. Yeah, that sounds good. Pick up the paper and gave the man two dollars. Almost 20 years ago, a tragedy happened in this town. The Afton murder spree occurred when a middle-aged man, William Afton, went crazy after the death of his two children. Murder spree is said to have started because he believed he could bring his children back from the bed if he gave enough lives in return. The story is heartbreaking because of the children lost. But it's also heartbreaking because it tells the tale of a man's soul soaked in sorrow that he took away another parent's children. Thankfully, he was stopped by an unknown force and surrendered to police before hurting anyone else. To this day, nobody knows why he gave up and turned himself in, but we are thankful. William Afton is serving out his life sentence after he appealed for the death sentence to be turned down. He is survived by his son, Michael Afton, but our sources haven't been able to track him down. The article ends. That'll be another one, sure. Bon Bon. This one is about the job I'm trying to get. Bon Bon's a brand new entertainment spot fit for all ages. Woohoo! With a colorful cast of animatronics, a brilliant environment, and stellar food. This new joint is worth visiting for a nice family meal. Animatronic staff are reportedly incredibly lifelike, with seamless movement and speech. Some skeptics wonder whether they're robotic or not. The owner has announced a brand new animatronic puppet. It will be unveiled within the next week or so. He claims this new cast member will truly astonish audiences and break the robotic industry. He has high hopes for this puppet and what it'll do for entertainment and technology. Locals wait in anticipation of what it could be. The article ends. And the last one, animatronic boom. Tide of change has swept across the family's entertainment industry with a new rise in animatronics and robots all across America. Although mostly in restaurants and arcades, they are also seen in children's toys and cartoons. You'll find these unselling machines in every corner of family entertainment. The recent takeover is due to the fast-paced development within robotic technology. They become more advanced with each new animatronic produced. From the first animatronic-based restaurant in 1977, the machines have come a long way in what they're capable of. Originally only capable of rigid movements and singing, most recent and updated models are capable of singing, dancing, walking around the restaurant, serving customers, cooking, and even having small conversations with you and your children, and they'll do your taxes. As more intricate animatronics re release, who knows what this will mean for not just or for not just families entertainment, <laughs> family entertainment, but entertainment as a whole. After reading the article, I fold the paper and turn it to the owner. Not much to do out here. I guess I'll just head back inside. You paid for it. Why would you give it back? The next few hours, I sat on the stool in the back of the store, kicking my feet and watching videos on my phone. Nothing happening in this time. Some people came in to buy some stuff, and the occasional druggie came in trying to steal, but nothing out of the ordinary. When Val was sweeping, we made eye contact and immediately diverted our gaze. Time came, and I helped her close up the store. She tossed me the keys, and we hopped in the car. If she's coming with me, why didn't she just drive her own car? Instead of... Be driving. 
After turning on the car and following her directions for a bit, we seemed to be getting close. Only about 10 minutes left of the 20-ish minute drive. We hadn't talked about anything. We're an awkward feeling is in the air. We haven't talked to each other for a few months. And now, we're just here. I don't understand why she'd go out of her way to give me her car, after how things ended. But, I wanted to thank her. Even after we split, it looks like she still cares, for some reason. Even if I don't understand why. Not turning, keep my eyes on the road, I say to her. Uh, thanks again for letting me use your car and even telling me about this job. You did not have to do that. With how things ended. I know. Got my finger on the wheel. Listen. I didn't mean to scare you in the store. I just lost my temper for a second. I hear an audible pop and turn over to her. She opens her mouth and a purple lollipop in her hand. It's alright. I know you wouldn't hurt me. It's not me I'm worried about, Andre. It's everyone else. I guess I forgot about last time, and I don't think she'll let me forget either. It isn't something I want to think about right now. I look back at the road, and we continue for a few minutes. Nothing, just silence. I let out a sigh. Well, I'm thankful for Valerie letting me use her car when she wants to resolve something. She keeps pushing the envelope, leading to mishaps on more than one occasion. I'm just glad she isn't. How's your father? Take kind of back by her question. It makes me do a double take. I what? Your dad, Andrew. How is he? Well, flash of the man she references flashed in my mind as my hand starts to visibly grip the steering wheel, leaving minor finger dents inside. Flashes of a drunkard laying at lashes down upon a screaming child stay within the back of my mind. A constant stream of pleas, weeps, and begs for the beating to stop swirling my memories. My grip around the steering wheel grows even tighter, threatening to break it. There are things I want to say, but they stay stuck in the back of my throat. Well, I manage to choke out little noises. Oh, jeez. We'll save. Well, that's a good question. I manage to spit out. When's the last time you called him? I thought for a moment. I don't think I can even remember the last time, so I respond with a shrug. After that, she left the situation alone, and we just stayed quiet for a bit. We finally arrived at the location after what felt like hours. We went to the empty parking lot. Valerie and I stepped out of the car. Getting out, I immediately started scoping out the area. The place was nice. Not the nicest, but the street was quiet. It was also vacant of all the bums and friends I'm used to seeing around my place. Sucks, but it was cheap. After noting this, we walked up to the front of the restaurant from across the street. I had a bad feeling as we drove up. Maybe because I find I had Freddy's incident in my mind. But as I got closer, those bad feelings seemed to fade away in the light. Not completely. Things were still eerie. Looking at the place from the front, it was big. But it didn't seem to have any windows. Nothing of us to peer inside from. That's strange. The place looks big and ominous. Streetlights around us weren't doing it much justice. And I'm probably just making up stuff. I look over towards Valerie and give her a nod towards the door. She nods back and I walk towards the front door. Knock. We'll save. I wait a few moments. But nothing happens. Do I knock again? Let's save. <laughs> Let's do now. I stop knocking and realize no one is coming. I turn towards Val, and she seems to understand. I stand there stumped for a moment. Well, no one is answering. Don't tell me we came out here for nothing. Well, I think they need someone for the night shift, so someone has to be around now. I take a moment to think and realize she's right. Maybe we should check around back. She nods and starts walking off towards the side of the restaurant. I quickly follow as we wander down the outside. Nothing special, a bit overgrown if anything. But it's dark enough that we can barely make out each other's silhouettes. I can spot high windows around here, but they're too high to look into. They do, however, have some space to grab onto. I stand below one and stare up, eyeing my goal. 
Hey Val, there's a window up here. What are you doing? I try. Look inside. I take a small step back and bend my knees slightly. Jumping up, I barely manage to grab onto the little space. Pull myself up, take a peek inside. My eyes take a moment to adjust. From what I can see, it looks like the kitchen. The light bounces off the metal benches and I see something large in the room. Bridge maybe? Some type of stand? Looks like someone's in the kitchen. My vision clears a bit and I start seeing something. Fuck? I said in a bewilderment at what I was looking at. Loud enough for Valerie to hear. What? Not realizing I said what I said out loud. I instinctively try to look down at Valerie to respond, but something faintly glows in the room. What the? I feel my grip loosen. My arms tremble from holding myself up for too long. I drop back down to the ground. Nothing, sorry. Must have been a trick of the light or something. Probably just your brain playing tricks from the creepiness of this place. Yeah, that's it. I dust my hands off on my pants and continue moving forward. When I reach the back of the building, it's pretty normal for a restaurant. There's a big dumpster overflowing with trash, a small car park with a single dingy vehicle, and a staff-only back door. There's a faint noise coming from behind the door. Valerie doesn't seem to pick up on it, and she prods some trash bags. Ew, what's in here? Why would you touch it? It's trash. Because they don't look normal. They don't look normal, so you touch it? Yeah. Wouldn't you? She turns to me with a scowl. Look at them. I come closer and inspect them. They look weird. You're right, this is weird. Oh, he starts to rip open one of the bags. She claws at the knot. Why is this so hard? If you ever take out the trash, probably doesn't want people to look. I stop at the feeling of a hand gripping my shoulder. I jump back from whatever gripped my shoulder. A man coming into view. Why are you two looking through my trash? Ali jumps up from the sound of someone else's voice. But he doesn't sound too bothered by this. Eh, uh, we're looking for the owner to talk to... Oh, I actually clicked that... Oh, that'd be me. He extends his hand. Joe, pleasure. At his calm demeanor, Val calms down and smiles. I take it and shake. I'm Andre. That's Valerie. Joe looks at her, then to the door. Well, I can't really show outsiders the place after hours. Um, so are you both looking for a job? He looks towards both of us. Uh, no. I look towards Valerie, and she shakes her head. No, then, just me. I'm interested in the position. Hmm. He gives me a stare. An intense stare. I try to stay still, so as not to throw him off. I know I need this job. Uh, let's make a deal. Watch over the place tonight, and you get the job tomorrow morning. Yay! That sounds like save just in case, right? Oh, yeah, right. I'll have it, just like that? Great, great. Come in, then. Before I can reply, he beelines for the door and vanishes inside. Val and I share a look. I shrug and follow the strange man. I stop before entering and whisper to Valerie. Val, thanks. I'll call you in the morning. If I'm not stuffed into one of these garbage bags by then. Val looks at me with a face of shock, then lets out a smile, realizing I was joking. All right, call me after your shift. Be safe, Andre. Yes? Catch with the man who leads me through the restaurant to the end office. He quickly examines that he needs to leave and that he'll call me in a bit on the office phone to explain things. Clock strikes 11. And I don't have time to guess my decision. Er, guess my decision second. I'm one. Hey. Alright. So now's the time to switch games. Oh, okay. Sure. Take this code. Oh, Jesus. You know, I'm going to save right here it's just so that the code is on the screen. Sounds good to me. Take this code and head over to the bottom bon part B, input the code, and you'll be able to start the night. Uh, start night one. Yay. Let's just write this down. Once you finish, come back here and you can continue chapter one.
Please enter the code you received after completing night one. Okay, I'm gonna save here. Ah, uh, still there. Wait, she moved. But it looks like she can only come from this way. Next, she'll be there. I wonder if there's like any secrets. Alright, so next she'll be, uh, there. I just have to wait. Still there. Hey, it's three o'clock already. Sweet. Aww. It didn't keep it closed all the way. All right, she has come to me earlier than I thought she would. We made it like three o'clock before she showed up before. Now it's one. And she's there. Like, jeez. Yep, yeah, see, she moved again. How is she? What the? Really, really, really wants to get here this time. Just waiting. All right. So she'll be at my door next. Do 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 do. Waiting, waiting. Close that. I think she's gone. Yes, that's the sound. Back to the stage you go. Oops, she moved. Nope. And she is like the only one I'm worried about, right? I said she was the only one. I don't. Three o'clock. Ugh. Last time I was at three o'clock, she had, she had like just made it to the door. Already twice now she's been there. Oh, she moved. Oh my god. Where is she? Okay, there she is. I didn't see her there. Very weird. Mm hmm. She's going to have to move at some point. I'm waiting. Still nothing. Come already. Get it over with. Need to send you back. See, now she's taking her time. Make up your mind. Well, that was weird. Oop. You ain't coming in. Yeah, back to your stage where you belong. Do, 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 do. Wait. Did I 
win? Oh, cool. So, uh, I better write this down, I guess. All right, back to part A. Great work, Superstar. Have fun. Beep, beep. I'm going to wait for my train of thought as the alarm app. My phone starts blinking. Look into my pocket and turn it off. Some lights around me turn on. The building seeming to start with its morning daytime protocol. 5 a.m. already? Wait, I may have the job. Wow, I'm not even tired. Just when that crossed my mind, I let out a big yawn. The nice shift is oh, so easy. No, um, need to stay awake. Gotta wait for Joe. Yeah, on a third time. Can't have him think I'm lazy. I need this job. Resisting the urge to sleep is just making it worse. My body feels so heavy. I slump up against the desk. Keep my eyes open is like pushing a boulder uphill. And if your name was Chris Redfield, you'd have no problem with that. I've gone so much longer without sleep. Come on. I blink slowly and let myself rest my eyes for a moment. Oh, it's never for a moment. Probably rip my eyes back open and push myself up. Nope. Up. Oh, awake? I'm staying awake. Slap my face a bunch and it starts to sting. Ow. I rub my now very dark or very red cheeks. I feel so awake. Another long blink. So incredibly awake. I sink back into the chair and stare at the ceiling. This ragged old desk chair is incredibly comfortable all of a sudden. So comfortable. Yawn. A few hours later. My body hunched over in the dark, dimly lit office space. I had my head covered in my arms as I slept softly on the desk, almost blending in with it. Holding into it, this is the longest amount of sleep I've gotten in a few days, and I know it. That's why I am trying my best to stay asleep. Yeah, but fate doesn't have it that way. I think I heard a door close. Whatever am I going back to s no, save? Yay. I think I heard a door close. There. I already read that. <clears throat> Rub my eyes to fully gain back my vision. Okay, I'm in a pizza restaurant as a security guard, in a place with a robot glitch out at night. They sometimes move around, which really sounds like some paranormal shit. But the guy, Joe, said it only happens at night. It's 8.07 in the morning now. My heart starts to pick up a rhythm, and my mind starts spiraling downwards. I could have swore I heard a door slam. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Did someone break in while sleeping? The hairs on the back of my neck started to stand up. Long before opening time. So it's not Joe. Fuck. I just started and someone already got in. Fuck, I need to check out what's going, what, where it's coming from. I could have sworn it came from my... Really? Work over the right doorway and slowly open the handle. Putting my ear to the door. After hearing nothing, I pull it open. As soon as I thrust myself out into the hallway, steam coats my face. A mist is in the air, being pushed out from the room ahead of me. Okay, calm down. It's really steamy coming out of that room. Maybe it could like... Or maybe it could be like a boiler room for all of that hot water. It's fine. I'm fine. I take a few steps down the hallway towards the door. As I get closer, I notice the hotter it gets. The more steam comes into, clouds my vision. As I reach the entrance from where the stream originates from, I have to close my eyes due to all the mist in the air. Open your eyes. I get more wet my eyes and blink away the heat-induced tears. I look forward and push the door open a bit more. Steam and white tiles. That's all I can see. Turn my head to the left and see a blur of blue. My eyes try to focus on what it is. I stare intently at the spot. Before I fall entirely over, someone catches me by the back of my shirt, pulls me up, and leads me out of the shower back into the office. They spin me around. It's a chicken. A yellow hen wearing an apron is standing in front of me with a fed up expression. Thought I heard someone sneaking around. Um. You know, really be staring at the employees while they're showering. 
I was mad, but looks fed up. And judging by the fact that she held me up with one hand, I need to think quick. She's also holding a, uh, a blade or weapon there. Yeah, you might want to be careful what you say. Um, I'm the new security guard. I thought a homeless person might have been using the shower. I was just trying to see who was in there. I wasn't trying to be a perv. Yeah, sure you weren't. Well, that sounds... Well, that's sort of the truth. Fusion flashes across her face as worry flashes across mine. As in the mix, I didn't realize the giant cleaver she had in her hand. Is that a fucking cleaver? Then her expression softens. Oh my, I didn't realize. I knew you were getting a new night guard. My apologies, dear. I saw you staring and assumed the worst. You were just trying to protect us. Well, it's lovely to meet you, fellow employee. You can call me Nina. She smiles and offers me her hand. Wing? Yeah, give it another save. Let's see. Andre, it's uh, nice to meet you. Take her wing in my hand, shake it. Discounting the fact that she has meat cleaver in her hand. I better not to mention it. Accept her hand and shake it. Her hand, wing, thing. It's kind of weird. It's kind of what you think shaking Big Bird's hands would be like. But it's weird. She's a girl, I'm assuming. So her hand and grip feel weaker than mine. But she's a robot? I think I want to ponder that thought. As I genuinely perplex me. Ahem. Huh? Deary. You're still holding on to my hand kind of tight now. Oh. And I quickly take my hand back and apologize. Sorry, I space out a bit here and there. She giggles in response. Yeah, it's mighty fine. I'm used to boys being frozen around me. She says, giving a small flirtatious to smirk at me. I think I'm going to call it once we end the day. Not like the whole day and then do another... FNAF typical kind of style. I think it'll just be, you know, when it first turns night. I'm sure it's going to turn night dialogue, and then we'll get the code to go play the actual night. Uh, is she flirting with me? Apologies oh, again. Oh. <sighs> Nina. After I completed my shift, I was supposed to talk to the owner about getting the job. She looked at me a bit perplexed. Eerie. I thought you said you were the new security guard. Um, oh, I am. Joe, I think it was, said as long as I made it through the night, we talk in the morning about the job. I don't know why he asked if it, if I made it through. The job wasn't hard or anything. Well, some weird things happened last night. I say that last night, that, ugh, I say that last part in ponderance. As I focus my attention on Nina, she face palms with a disappointed expression. Don't listen to Joe. He just likes to kid around. We've had some issues with past employment here. He looks back at me with a smile. What kind of past issues? Well, you look kind, sugar. I hope you're the one to stay. When she says that, something in my heart makes me feel warm. This whole situation, her mannerisms, the way she speaks, it's all too convincing. Too inviting. I see why this place is so popular. Hey, you say you join us for breakfast. Half right through making it. We have enough for another mouth. What, they can eat? Uh, sure, just to be clear. We aren't eating nuts or bolts or anything like that. She looks at me to see if I'm joking, but I'm legitimately asking. She then bursts into laughter. I can hear a few clucks and box here and there. And she's clearly having a good laugh. No, sugar. We're having regular food. It's good, I promise. But I need you to do me a favor. Uh, what is it? The other gals need to be woken up. Bon Bon, the gal behind you who has been taking a long time in the shower, is up. But there are three other gals snoozing. She described it as them sleeping, but not deactivated. Weird. I don't think they are robots. I think these are like... Mutated. Or something like that. Engineered. Bio, organically, yeah. You know, I'm gonna save because you know what? I think this is where I'm gonna end it. 
Um, I don't know how long this is going to go until we get to the next night. So, yeah, that's good for now, I guess. And on that note, you'll have yourselves a good one, and I will see you later.